I lobbed all my gear in the back here. Tripod table, turntable, and uh, the box. Time has been so hard on us, my friend. Pumping up tires if you don't know what I'm doing. Sun goes down, but we get back out. again. We drive. Trouble is a silly thing. It always ends up breaking. Look how full the creek is. There's so much water here. This is super full for this creek and it's not even no at its fullest right now we've been getting so much rain no matter what they wanted, they don't hello there no i'm not slick and i'm not smooth today i'm delivering all my promises i made in my last video i'm kicking off a series called how i made where i go more in depth on my mocks the techniques and go just all in all more in depth on these builds because i feel like the way i do my normal videos where i speak super duper fast and you can't exactly understand what i'm saying you're not getting the full picture and I'm not showing everything that I, I put into the mock to make it as comparable as it is. So that's the goal of this series here. I'm going to be going more in depth and um, I'm, I'm just going to do it kind of relaxed, chillaxed. Enjoy it a little bit more, you know? Take the level from up here where I'm speaking super fast and trying to get everything into a three minute video and dial it down to right about here where I'm taking everything to a 17 to 30 minute to two hour video. <laughs> Not that long, um, but I'm gonna go get my mock and probably set up over here. Right here, I'm actually standing on a ledge. If you, uh, there's a creek behind me and I just, it's actually kind of dangerous. I could trip and fall into the creek at any moment. Let me run and grab the, the stuff, I'll be right back. See, I told you I'd be back. And look guys, wearing a Stranger Things shirt because I made the Stranger Things 4 teaser mock or whatever. I'm also filming that today and the how I made behind the scenes thing for that. So stay tuned for that video. It'll probably come out this weekend or next week. I don't know, it depends on when this video comes out. I'm dropping everything here. I'm not running outside with this thing. Number one way to lose some parts, run outside with your mock. I guess it makes sense that the first thing I talk about is the first thing that I built, right? So the first thing that I started to build when making this was this front section right here. And the reason I built this edge first is because I had the image in my head of when Gollum fell off the edge of the bridge in the end of Return of the King and that was what was stuck in my mind and that was essentially the inspiration for making this entire mock. So it made sense for me to actually build this front portion first. So what I did, I started off with just these pieces which is just some slope pieces and I, I built this way. I knew that it was going to be snot so I started building um, you know, down and I knew I wanted it to angle down so I used a combination of slopes, the long slopes and gradually getting shorter to give it more of like a, an exponential curve if you math I don't know this is a weird way of explaining it that's essentially what I used to to create this initially and initially the top of this thing if I take it off here this part right here this the top which is actually what the minifigures stand on looks like this it looks like the back of this mock which was pretty horrendous this is completely flat, there's no texturing there, and it doesn't look good. And the top of this bridge actually started to look like that. So I had to make sure that I textured it. So I, I kept the slope shape, but in between the slopes, I started to add some texturing using some smaller pieces. And that was the foundation for building the rest of this. I did not want it to be completely smooth. So I used masonry bricks, some studs, a bunch of small plates, some cheese wedges, and some profile bricks. That way I could actually get some texturing in there. And I think it looks pretty good. I also use some snot pieces on the side to add some more studs uh, and some more stud exposure and some more angles. So basically this entire section here is slopes on the bottom uh, and it's just got a textured wall on the back. And if I pop this off, you can see here when I set it down, it's just like a rock foundation. You could actually stick this in the ground and it would make for a pretty cool rock or a gigantic tombstone or something like that. But um, that's what I used to recreate the top. And once I got to this portion right here and I stopped right here, I knew that I actually had to make the pillars because um, this isn't just a rock bridge that extends out. And funny enough, I think in the actual movie, the, the pillars support a like a fake bridge and then the, the rock portion actually comes up at a diagonal, which would mean I would have to create this, and this whole bridge up here made of rock would actually be going down. But I didn't make it like that just because of size purposes. I mean, this thing is pretty small as is. You don't get to see a whole lot here. So once I reached here, I knew that I had to make some pillars, and I didn't actually have the idea to make everything built upside down. 
until I, I ran into an obstacle. And this is the beauty of not having a lot of pieces at your disposal. Initially, I wanted to have those slopes that are inverted like this. They're inverted slopes where the studs are on the top and they attach like this, but they're three studs high or three bricks high. You can see some of them here on this back section, slopes like this that, that angle upwards, reverse slopes I like to call them. I initially wanted those going all the way down because I wanted to have this kind of shape but I didn't have enough of those in light gray. I had enough to make here and I had enough to make it on the back side to have like a mirror shape, but I didn't have enough for six sections. So I, I realized that I could not have it uh, be uniform if I did it that way, so I had to work around that. And that's when I decided to use these slopes, put some masonry bricks on top and angle them upwards because I figured that way I could have it all uniform and it would add for an interesting effect because you know, you, you're not used to seeing the underside of plates sticking out with a smooth surface and I thought that was pretty unique. I felt like it could be something that would really make this mock stand out and give it something to look at seeing as it is super small. The only problem with that though is I ran into an issue with these archways right here and I wanted to make sure these archways faced upwards. I wanted these archways here because it really sells the medieval vibe. You have a lot of arched windows but it also really contrasts the rocky angled textures of, you know, the, the actual rock portion of the volcano with man-made structures that are curved so I wanted to make sure I had archways here but like I just mentioned before the pillars were facing downwards so I had to think of a way to make sure the the archways were going up and that was actually a pretty simple fix it wasn't too hard to figure out all I had to do was use some headlight bricks with the half plate insert connect some headlight bricks with no insert on them at all uh, and then I was able to attach these archways up facing upwards with no issue at all, which is extremely fortuitous because it made it extremely easy, it blended well, and it wasn't some super complicated uh, technique that took up a lot of space. It only is two bricks to make it face upwards like that, which is really good. And because of Lego geometry, it was able to go flush up against this bridge right here, which I was extremely happy with. And uh, all I had to do was, you know, continue the texturing up top that I started on this portion with the, the masonry bricks and everything like that. And then keep some angled rocky textures on the bottom going through the pillars uh, and under the archways, which is essentially just more of, you know, slopes like this. And it's just going up and down, up and down with different kinds of slopes and stuff like that. So once I figured out the pillar technique and the rock technique, I continued that all the way down until I felt like the bridge was long enough. And that ended up only being three pillar sections and six archways if you count the other side which is not a whole lot but i think it's long enough considering how small this this mock actually is mount doom itself is huge and this does not do it justice but i had to do something smaller so once i got to this back section i built down and i, I just started constructing these rocks in a normal way you would just build up and down no snot nothing but i did include some snot techniques just to spice it up with some studs that stick out uh, you can see i have some slopes like right here, some slopes that aren't exactly, uh, you know, facing upwards, it's not, and that just adds some extra, you know, detail you can look at. If you're looking closely at this mock, you'll see like, oh, look, there's a slope and it's, it's not actually going up and down, and it's not. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I hope it's cool, so I, I, that's why I put that there, just for some uh, added detail. Then the final thing I built was this thing up here in my black drawer. It's very big. There are a lot of pieces in my black drawer, so I dumped everything out, pulled out as many slopes and cheese wedges as I could, and just made a small little archway, which is definitely not what this thing looks like in the movie, but I needed something small and something to go up top here, so it wasn't just a slab of gray with a little bit of orange, so that's why I put this black archway up here. And then all I did to top it off was put Gollum, Sam at the back, and Frodo fighting with Gollum for the ring. And that was pretty much it. All I had to do there was uh, put the figures there and I think it was pretty easy to tell what it was. If you're a diehard fan, you might be able to tell what it is without the figures, but the figures really sold it, so I was pretty happy I got them. I picked them up at the Brick Universe convention where I got the Mandalorian figures, in case you're curious. That's where I got them. Um, I didn't actually buy any sets with them. I wanted to get Weathertop, but they didn't have it, so couldn't get weather top, so I just purchased the figures separately, and they came in handy here, and they're gonna come in handy in the future, winky winky. But that's really all there is to this thing. By the way, this is how loud the table is, in case you were wondering. Yeah, I have to take the sound off the videos because the table is really loud. Yeah, but that's essentially the mock right there. I'm pretty proud of it. If you haven't seen the actual video for it, I will leave it linked down below so you can check that thing out. It's pretty short, it's only like six minutes or something like that, and I don't know how long this video is, 
but it's probably shorter than this video. So if you want to go watch that, if you haven't seen it already, I'll leave it linked down below or in the card above. But I'll leave you guys hanging here for at least a couple more days, like three days or something like that, and then I'll release my Stranger Things 4 teaser trailer mock, which is actually what I'm going to film right now, and then I'm going to do the behind the scenes how I made thing for that. I'm pretty proud of that mock too, it's pretty cool. Uses a lot of cool techniques, building up and down and left and right and all that stuff too. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I will see you guys in the next video though. I'm gonna go film it and uh, yeah. What should I say, take care? <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching and most importantly, take care. Still not happy with that outro.